Darling, you send me. So today I'm leaving for my rural placement for GP and it means that I'm gonna to have to be going on a six hour long train trip. So let me show you what I'm bringing. So I've got my tech stuff here, which will be put in this bag, and then I've got this big suitcase. Everything is in here to last me for the three weeks. That's all neat, that's all done, and we're gonna make our way out now. So I'm near the train station now, I'm with Deb and we're just getting some banh mi's before the train trip. I've got my bags down here, got the backpack, got everything ready. arrived at the accommodation. We're staying at this little bed and breakfast place. I've had some food. I caught up with my friend Jack, who I'll be staying with. So I'm gonna try get settled in, try get organized. And Hey guys, so this is gonna be my room for the next couple of weeks. This is the bed that I'm staying on. You've got Pueblo over here to keep me company. <laughs> all my cables I brought, like all my charges and camera stuff. Got my laptop, headphones. This is like a spare bed. No one's really staying here, but I'm sort of using it as like a mini desk slash just a dumping ground for all my stuff. These nice little lamps to illuminate the place because this light's a little bit dark. I've arranged all my shirts for clinic. You've also got this TV up here, but I don't think I'm ever gonna use it. That's pretty much the room. So as part of our general practice rotation, we have to do an urban placement and we also have to do a rural placement. And what's good about it is that we get to see the differences between being in a more metropolitan city area and now being in a more rural town with a smaller population. I think this town only has about 10,000 people. So very different to Sydney city, which has more than 4 million, but it's getting later in the evening. It's about 10 o'clock right now. I head to bed and I will see you guys tomorrow. To roll out of bed because I start clinic at nine. So I've got about half an hour to get over there and pack my bag. So let's do it. back at home and I finished my first clinical session. So like I said in a previous video, we have to do a certain amount of sessions during the term. So one session counts as three and a half hours and we have to do a certain amount by the end of the three weeks. But it was pretty interesting this morning, we had a patient that had a right bundle branch block on the ECG and you can see the characteristic M type pattern on leads V1 to V3 and then you see the W pattern on V6. There's like a good way to remember it. William Morrow for determining whether it's like the M shape for more right bundle branch block or the W shape if it's left. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a break here 
and then I will head back for the afternoon session. The clinic was super quick because it turns out that I thought the practice closed at like 6 or 7 but it only closes at 5 so I got there late and a lot of the doctors were already either they'd gone home or they were finishing up and they only had a few patients left so I joined one of the doctors and said hi, met him and he said that he only had two patients left. One was a complex patient that doesn't really like to see medical students and the other was a really quick one. So I sat in with the quick one and then he's like, well, all I've got is telehealth, which is kind of boring, so you're happy to go and do your own stuff. So sort of skipped out on the session and I'm back now, which is the good thing about having a five minute walk home. But it's a beautiful day and the views that are in front of me uh, super super nice. I'm probably gonna study to make up for my um, lack of a session and how I've been studying for GP recently is been using a textbook called Motarg's General Practice which is really good because he's comprehensive but also succinct in the way that they organize the topics whether it be broken up into arthritis or into abdominal pain or into um, cough and syncope and like they go through each of the symptoms what are the most likely diagnosis what are the things that you shouldn't be missing or looking out for so I've been really liking that textbook and then I've also been doing a little bit of Anki just for those um, little niche facts. And then we have a few lectures that the uni gives us, which um, are always good to work through. So I'm gonna work on that for the rest of the afternoon and try to get some stuff done. Just got back from my run, showered and had some dinner. So I was going around the town, getting a little more familiar with all the streets. And I found this cool trail by the river and it was a spectacular view because you had the sun coming down, you could see the moon in the sky and everything just reflected off the water really nicely. So it was a really relaxing run. But a quick quiz question for you guys. What drug causes bilateral ankle edema? And I'll give you a second to think about it. And the answer is calcium channel blockers. So Jack got asked this by the doctor today in the practice. And it's good to know because when you're prescribing drugs to the patient, you want to make sure that you're aware of any common side effects so you can warn the patient about them to make sure that if they do have any of these symptoms, they want to be coming back to review the medications and to change it if it's necessary. And it's really important if these patients are starting on these new medications for the first time. And right now I'm going to give Deb a call because I haven't spoken to her all day. We're going to kick back and we'll watch a movie on Netflix. Morning guys, so I'm with Jack and we are off to the practice for our morning session to, for me to officially meet our supervisor and I think most of the doctors come in at about 7am so I'm not sure how it's going to work in the first 20 minutes because we'll be there at 6.30. Jack's over here <laughs> and we're just trying to wake ourselves up so yeah. see you guys in a bit. Alright, so we finished the morning session and it was really, really good. So we got a chance to do parallel consulting. It's when we sit in to see a patient and then we do a history, we do a little bit of a targeted exam, we come to see them firsthand and then afterwards the doctor will join us and we'll pass on the information that we just talked about to the doctor. They'll ask any more questions if they need more information. Jack was in one room. I was in the other room and then our supervisor went between both rooms as he did the different consults. We're gonna go back at 12.20 because there's a drug rep coming in and then my supervisor restarts his afternoon clinic so we'll do some stuff then.
Hey guys, so I'm back home and I had a very, very late finish for the afternoon clinic. It is now 6.30, pretty much on the dot, and we did a lot. It was, we stayed back for good reason because we saw some interesting stuff. I will tell you about it soon, but I have to join a Chinese lesson, which is pretty much starting now. <laughs> right, and... <laughs> yeah, how to <laughs> but I didn't have <laughs> 我很忙, 我有很多, 呃, 功课, 我有很多上课, okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Alright guys, the lesson went well. I'm so bad right now. It has been too long of not practicing. Now I'm actually doing a tutoring session for GAMSAT. Gone from getting taught something to then teaching someone else. Good, good. Sorry, my lighting is absolutely terrible. These values are core to understanding others and vary in their strength from individual to individual. Why, why do they vary from individual to individual? The point is you don't have to answer them, but you need to pose to us when we're reading it that we, we, we start thinking about it. Is it anger? Is it calmness? Is it appropriate? Is it not appropriate? You needed to specifically define what you meant by thin line instead of assume the definition from the quote. That would have made it a little bit clearer. So, just something to think about. <sighs> All right guys, so I finished tutoring and we talked a lot about GAMSAT. So the GAMSAT is the admissions test here in Australia to get into medical school for postgraduate universities. And if you're looking at it for the first time, it can be super daunting because it's this big long exam with all these different sections. And what I always remind students is that it is something that you have to sort of build the skills up for long term. But the cool thing that I got to do today is I did my first suture on a patient. So I did one. So in the past we've had suture workshops and we've been able to do it on like a chicken leg or um, like a dummy or something like that and nothing really proper. So this is the first taste of what a real patient procedure sort of felt and looked like. So before we move on, I want to quickly talk about today's video sponsor, LG. So I partnered up with LG and a few weeks ago they sent me over their laptop, the LG Gram, and I've been loving it so far. The LG Gram series comes in the 14 inch, the 16 inch, and the 17 inch. This is the 16 inch version, and the first thing that I noticed when I took it out of the box was how light it was. So you'd expect on a bigger 16 inch laptop that it'd be a bit heavy, be a bit clunky, and um, you know, like you'd, you'd feel a bit of weight, but with this thing, it doesn't have that. It's lighter than you'd expect. And I think it's only about 1.19 kilos. And apparently this is the Guinness World Record holder for the lightest 16 inch laptop. There you go. And before LG even sent me the laptop, there's three things that I'm mainly looking at before I buy one. I'm looking at aesthetics, speed, and portability. So in terms of portability, this one ticks it off. It's super lightweight. It's got a slim form factor and I've had no problems moving it from place to place. In terms of aesthetics, I really like the matte black design and finish on it. And opening it up, you've got this really nice 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. So it's a 2560 by 1600 resolution screen. And this is bigger and more crisp than your standard 1920 by 1080p. So when it comes to watching movies, when it comes to looking at video, it just looks really crisp, really nice, and it's extremely color accurate. So the screen on this thing is killer. Another thing on the design, I really like the keyboard layout. So it's got a number pad here and the keys are nice and wide space so you don't fat finger it and end up pressing the wrong thing. And it's got a nice glass touch pad, which I've had no problems with. So overall, the form factor and the design on this thing is awesome. The matte black also complements all the rest of my tech. So the whole thing just looks very professional. So another thing that I look at is speed. And this thing is lightning quick. It's packed with the latest Intel processors. It's got 500 gigs of NVMe SSD and it's got 16 gigs of RAM. So it's an absolute machine. It's able to handle video editing, like gaming, and when you have to do anything like surfing the web, assignments, reports, it's killer. With a laptop as light as this one, with a screen resolution as high as it has, you think maybe they have to compensate on battery life, but no, that's definitely not the case. LG reports having a battery life of about 22 hours, and I've not personally tested this, but just from my own use, it lasts the whole day, no problems. I charge it once and it's great. It's got Thunderbolt 4 charging, which means it's quick and you can also connect it to um, like a 4K resolution display or an 8K resolution display, which is really cool. And what's convenient for me is it has two USB drives. So if I wanna connect like an external hard drive and then a SD card reader, it's super good. If you didn't bring your charge or you don't have access to a PowerPoint during the day, this thing will have no troubles getting you along. Um, you only have to charge it once and it'll last you pretty much the whole day during your lectures, during your assignments, during your study session in the library after class. 
Plus. So this new laptop has been a huge addition to my daily tech. I've been loving it so far on my rural placement, especially when I don't have access to my proper gaming PC at home. So big thanks to LG for sending this over. And if you want to read more about the LG Dram lineup, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Tell me how does it feel living that good life? Never ever really had to think twice about Who you step on, you'll just pay the break away Send them the bill when you can today Let's talk about making it where everybody's chasing it Like their minds are made up, or some would say brainwash Pay attention to the chaos Cause it's too simple to get lost Tell me what does it mean once you reach the top Heard the fall's real bad, is it worth it to you? Selling your soul, cause it's something you told Tell me, how can you go on living this way? Ignoring the pain Trust me, your heart will eventually stop Drown out the fears of live under your bed It's so in your head You got blood on your head Try not be a good man Looks like you're just lost For your worth and the things you bought you got blood on your hands Trying to be a good man baby. Looks like you're just lost The way you work and the things you bought As you would have just seen, I got back from the library. I was doing an editing session and working on a new video, which is almost finished and it should be uploaded by the time that you guys are seeing this. So please check it out. But this morning, Jack and I, we only stayed for the morning session. So we we're there from 6.30 to 10. And what was cool today is I got to do my first intramuscular injection in the form of a flu vaccination. But right now it's about three o'clock and I'm feeling pretty lazy. So the thing with being productive and you know studying and making sure that you're always doing work is that sometimes when you just want to chill, you'll feel guilty if you're relaxing. So it's important to set times in your schedule, in your week, in your day, um, where you just do nothing. And I think this afternoon's gonna be one of those days. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jack and I, we headed to have some Thai food for lunch. We just finished, I'm back near the practice now and the next session will start at about two o'clock. That's when the doctor arrives and it's like five two. So I got about five minutes and then I'll head inside. I'll see you guys. It is now 6 p.m., dark outside, which is why my screen looked so fuzzy before. But it was a good session, a long session, but a good one. I managed to do a little bit more stitches, did more flu jabs, taking blood pressures, and then just sitting in and watching. I have a Chinese lesson in 20 minutes, so I'm going to have something to eat, and then I'll join the call. Big thanks again to LG for sponsoring this video. I've been loving the LG Gram, um, which has been like my workhorse while I've been here. I'm gonna wrap up the vlog there. I hope you guys saw a glimpse of what a rural placement is like in medical school, or at least from my perspective, maybe learn something new. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and as always until next time this is Sebastian stay sharp so this is Pablo he's gray not blue like Bruce and if you put sunglasses on him he's an absolute baller look at him <laughs> <laughs>